Hello, welcome to this second tutorial for the Feed Scroll Generator app for Autodesk Invento. This app allows you to automatically create feed screw geometry directly inside Autodesk Inventor. And this second tutorial is going to be a bit shorter. We're only focusing on how to import an AutoCAD 2D bottle profile and use that to create your 3D shaft model inside Inventor. As you saw in the first tutorial, we can sketch any bottle profile we want using the Inventor sketching tools, but of course you may have been supplied an AutoCAD bottle profile that you want to use easily and conveniently. So let's take a look at the AutoCAD profile we have to work with. If I switch over to AutoCAD here, it's a series of lines and arcs joined together. It's not enormously complex, but certainly we want to save some time by not having to re-sketch it in Inventor. So back to Inventor, let's create a new empty part file. And let's hit the generate button for the app. And then we can use the sketch 2D bottle profile button as if we were going to sketch it inside Inventor. And then of course, now we've hit that button, we're inside a normal Inventor sketch, we can use whatever import tools that we might want to use to bring in the AutoCAD geometry. There's two main ways to do that. You can either use the Insert AutoCAD button here. That will open the Import Wizard where you can choose your layers, choose some options for the import. I prefer not to use that method. You can't have the AutoCAD file open when you're using that method. It's not quite as flexible. The method I prefer to use is to, if we delete this existing circle, is to just head over to AutoCAD and just uh, drag a box and pick the geometry that I want in AutoCAD and hit Control C and then head back to Inventor inside the sketch here and hit Control V. And when we do that, it's going to have a think about it for a second or so, and then it's going to give us a preview box for this geometry. Now, an important tip at this point, if I right click, I will have the option to choose paste options. That's important because profiles in Inventor sketches have these things called geometric constraints between the endpoints of the lines, and we need to make sure that the endpoints of the lines have a coincident geometric constraint, which we can do automatically by ticking this box here. If the AutoCAD drawing happened to be a block, then this would be a good option to tick as well. In this case, it wasn't, it was just separate lines and arcs. Okay, so with those options ticked, I'm going to say OK, and then I'll just place it out in space here because I'm not quite sure where the center is going to be until I actually place it. Okay, if the bottle shape has come in maybe a thousand or a hundred times too big or too small at this point, then it's a units issue. You need to check which units you've got in AutoCAD, which I think you can do with um, DD units, isn't it, inside here. Um, that should tell you what your drawing units are. In AutoCAD, it's millimeters, which means it's fine in Inventor because my Inventor units are millimeters. If I go to Tools, Document, Settings, that will tell me under Units what the current units are in my Inventor file. So if those are out of whack, the geometry may com come in much larger or smaller than you expect, and you have to correct that and try again. Or you could use the Inventor Sketch scale tool which is over here but that's probably not the easiest option right we need to position this profile centered over this bottle center point here what's the easiest way to do that well moving geometry around an inventory especially if you're used to autocad is not actually the easiest thing so i recommend a little trick here to block all of this geometry together to group it together so that we can move it around more easily there's a tool which is not available on the ribbon by default. What we need to do inside the sketch here is right click show panels up here and turn on the layout panel if you haven't got it on already. And if I do that, you should have a command in there called create block. Now what I'd recommend you do is click and drag and select all the geometry that you want to be included in the bottle profile and then hit the create block button then you can specify an insert point if you want, not strictly necessary in this case. I don't actually have a center point to use for the insert point. So I'll just say okay. 
And now what that's done is it's grouped this all together so that I can drag it around nice and easily. What it's also done is put a blocks folder in the browser here and I can actually drag that block in again if I want. Uh, it's actually available in a sort of block library there now for me. So I don't want three of them, just illustrating the concept. And then I do need to snap this in position. Though. It's no good me dragging it visually over roughly where I think it should go. I need to snap this center point of the profile exactly on this bottle center point here. So how do I do that? Well, I need to use the coincident constraints in the sketch and I can make this line coincident with this point first. And then I don't actually have the reverse line, uh, the, the vertical line here. So if I'm missing geometry like that, what I could actually do is right click on this block and edit the block here and I can sketch in that additional line. So I'm going to just start a new line here. I'm going to say that I want this to be a construction line. So I'll turn on construction and I'll just see if I can draw a line, a construction line down the center there, which will help me a bit, won't it? And then I can hit finish edit block. Now I've got the point to snap to as well. So then I'll use the coincident constraint again and snap this line to this point. Okay, it's not quite what I want yet because I actually need to rotate this, make it horizontal. Now, you've, you get a clue here. You see down in the bottom right, if you're familiar with sketches in Inventor, it says one dimension needed. One dimension needed for what? Well, one dimension needed to fully constrain this sketch to stop it from any geometry from having any degrees of freedom remaining. So I want to make this line horizontal effectively. So if I hit the horizontal constraint up here and pick that line, that has done the opposite of what I expected. It's made that line vertical. So I'm going to hit Control Z. Welcome to the wonderful world of Inventor sketch horizontal and vertical uh, orientations. It may be the opposite of what you think it is. You have to just sometimes try it. So I'm going to put a vertical constraint on this line. And then you see that that has made that line horizontal. Also, if I hit escape, you see my sketch is now fully constrained and the lines have changed color. So this is what I want snapped and constrained to the correct place. The only other thing that could trip me up at this point is if my lines and arcs or splines from AutoCAD are not actually describing a closed profile. If this isn't a watertight profile here, then we won't be able to extrude it in Inventor we're going to have problems. Of course, AutoCAD doesn't care if two lines have a 0.001 millimeter gap between them when you're drawing a bottle profile because you're not necessarily extruding it. So we'll take a quick look at how to sort that out in a moment if necessary. But for now, I think this is good. So I'm going to hit finish 2D sketch. And the app's going to try to use that new bottle profile and to try and extrude it to give me a preview. So you can see that it has done that and it was a watertight closed bottle profile there, which is good. I'm going to save this part. But um, I don't want to make it too easy. What if we had an AutoCAD profile with maybe a, a tiny gap in it or something like that? Let's head into AutoCAD and this might be the kind of problem that you might face. Let's just pick one of these lines and let's just drag that off ever so slightly so we do in fact now have a gap between our lines but of course you wouldn't notice at this kind of scale so let's save this AutoCAD drawing let's head back into Inventor and let's create the problem and then fix it so if I go back to sketch 2d bottle shape let's get rid of this good block unfortunately and let's copy and paste this bad geometry in and see how we might be able to fix it And let's hit Control V. So that was Control C in AutoCAD, Control V in Inventor. Remember our right click options, paste options. Let's constrain and apply the geometric constraints. Of course, I don't think it's going to recognize that those points are in the same place because they're not. So it won't be able to apply a geometric coincident constraint between those two points where there is a gap. And um, so we're going to have to fix that another way. Let's left click to place and then we'll create a block out of it again. In fact, actually, we know there's going to be a problem here, don't we? I'll tell you what, let's create the block anyway, and then we'll 
we'll see the problem and we'll fix it. So select all the geometry, create block, let's just say OK. And then I want to edit that block and put the center line on there again. So I think I can double click on it. That will actually go into edit the block. Start a new line tool, make it construction and draw the line in here to give me my center point, which I was missing. Finish block. And then I'll use my coincident constraint between here and here. That's a bit easier this time, isn't it? And then I'll hit escape on my keyboard and then I want to put the vertical or horizontal constraint in there now. So that's vertical there and there. Okay, sketch is fully constrained. I think that I've got a closed profile, although I know that I don't. So I'm going to hit finish 2D sketch and we get a message saying we don't have any valid closed profiles in the bottle sketch. We've got to fix this before we can continue. So I'm gonna say okay to this and then I need to actually go into the model browser. You see we've got a broken tool extrusion. We've got a sketch called bottle sketch here. Here's where we need to actually fix it. And there are some handy sketch tools in Inventor to enable us to fix these kind of problems with open profiles that should be closed. We can use uh, something called the Sketch Doctor in here. So let's double click on the bottle sketch, go and edit it, and then let's go and explode this block and we'll have to re-block it again afterwards. So I'm going to right click on this block and hit explode. And now if I right click, I should be able to choose the Sketch Doctor and I'll hit Diagnose Sketch. I'll choose all of these things because in our example, I'm not sure what the problem is actually, uh, where whether I've got an open point or a missing coincident constraint or something like that. So I'll say, okay, it has found an open loop. So it's not that one, it's this open loop that's the problem. And I'll say next, next, close loop, finish. There is a gap between the points, which is exactly the problem that we created artificially would you like to close the gap yes the loop has been successfully closed would you like to exit sketch mode and update the part uh, i'll say no to that so if that's your first time you've seen the sketch doctor inside uh, an inventor sketch it can help to fix the problems maybe 60 70 80 percent of the time you just have to a bit of trial and error keep hitting next and and it will often be able to highlight the problem for you which it did in this case so i've made my edits to this sketch the loop now appears to be closed let's just have a little zoom in does look like the loops closed now doesn't it um, another quick tool you can use to check to see if you do actually have coincident constraints on all your points if i drag a box and pick what you should be seeing is these big square glyphs wherever you've joined anything if you're not seeing a big square glyph here then the points are not actually joined and you don't have a coincident constraint that's maybe a thing for another day. So let's finish the 2D sketch here. And then the app's going to try and rebuild it. Let's hit accept. Ah, oh, no, excuse me. We're not even in the app at the moment, are we? We've just got a broken tool extrusion. So we could manually fix this ourselves. This is just an extrude feature. But the app will fix it automatically for us if we, if we hit the generate button. So let's just hit the generate button. Now we're sure that we've got a closed profile and the app will be able to and calculate that that profile the manual way of doing it would have been to double click on that extrusion and pick the profile again and say this is the profile we want to extrude okay and now we've uh, successfully fixed that broken AutoCAD profile it's really just a case of using the normal tools to to build this shaft so don't want to uh, leave the shaft half built here let's just use use the normal settings to uh, create something that looks sensible and then we'll hit build so that we can see the finished result and get a bit of a payoff for all our hard work. Okay, that looks fine for an example like this one. If this was real world, I'd probably consider adding some bottle oversize, a bit of clearance to the bottle, but let's just choose a, a low setting for the profiles, loft profiles and loft rails, and let's hit go. Okay, so the app's uh, getting to work and uh, I'll speed the video up as usual at this point. Okay, that's all created in uh, about two and a half minutes. 
I'll say uh, that yes, I do want to continue with another operation because I just wanted to show you in here, whoops, I just wanted to show you here the option to uh, add some clearance to the bottle. And this is covered in a different tutorial, but you can see here if I wanted to add a bit of clearance at the start, at the end, in the middle, then I can do that with the bottle oversized tool, either all round clearance, or if I toggle to a different kind, I can do a kind of stretched clearance oversize for the bottle as well. And then just hit generate again and create another shaft. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Hope that gives you all the tools you need to import AutoCAD 2D profiles and use them as bottle profiles inside the app. Have a great day.